What's up guys, welcome back. I hope you and your portfolios are doing okay. The past week has been a little bit red, down almost 3%. And perhaps more impactful, on the homepage of CNBC today, we had a very distressful looking image. My portfolio is doing just fine. In the past week, we're down about 2%. A lot of this is because I now have a pretty large bond position. So if we try and exclude this, my equities over the past week, it's down about two and a half percent overall. And what really excites me is this number right here of $89.67 in dividends. I think that's from SCHD. It is yet to actually come in, but SCHD just finally paid their quarterly dividend and I couldn't be more excited. And speaking of my favorite dividend paying assets, I'm thinking about making a video shortly on either Jeppy, Divo, or XYLG. Maybe a comparison between all three of them. Because as I touched on in my last video, I think in the current market, these kind of cover to call hybrid enhanced dividend funds are very appealing choices. So let me know in the comments below which one of these names or potentially another name are you most interested in. But moving on, today we are specifically covering ticker high. A few of you guys have been asking me to review this relatively new high yielding fund. This is the Simplify Enhanced Income ETF. Immediately, you might think it's similar to something like Divo or Jetbe like I was just talking about. However, this is quite a bit different, and this spread strategy of using either put or call options is by far the main selling point about this fund. Apparently, they have a sophisticated option writing algorithm, which seeks to sell spreads that generate attractive risk-adjusted returns, while an additional layer of risk management helps manage tail risk associated with selling options. And taking a look at the portfolio holdings, we can see the very unique makeup here. So the vast majority, if we look at the percent weight over here, is in treasury bills. And then up here, we have the active option overlay strategy, which again is a credit spread, either using call options or put options, depending on the discretion of management. Now, aside from this, at least on the main page, we're not getting too much uh, details about this strategy. So to help give us a better insight of exactly how this ETF operates under the hood, we can take a look at the more detailed documentation. First thing to note here is the expense ratio. It's... 0.51%, not atrocious, but certainly meaningful. But right here we have the principal investment strategy in depth. So the fund is actively managed to keep that in mind. That is certainly an added risk to a more complicated strategy like this. And they seek to fulfill the investing objective by using two income strategies. First is an interest income strategy. And part two is an income generating option strategy. And then down here, they break down in more detail exactly what each part does. So number one is the most basic. As we saw, the vast majority of the holdings here are treasury bonds, which produce interest. But the part you guys all want to know about is the income generating option strategy. To generate that additional income, the fund employs an option spread writing strategy on equity ETFs and fixed income ETFs. That's why if you come back to the holdings page, we saw this option overlay on both the SPY index and the bond index. And these options can be in two forms a call spread or a put spread. This is completely up to the discretion of management and they would use a call spread strategy when the advisor believes an ETF's price will decrease, remain unchanged, or only slightly increase. In a call option spread, the fund writes an out of the money call option while also purchasing a further out of the money call option. I'll give you guys a visual on this in a minute, but that's why it's a call spread strategy. You're both buying a call option and selling one. And they use a put spread strategy when the advisor believes an ETF's price will increase, remain unchanged, or decrease slightly. All right, so to give you guys a visual on what all this means, here is the call spread scenario. On the y-axis, we have the price of the index, and on the x-axis is the time or the duration, which is usually about a month. So the call spread option includes selling a call option that's slightly out of the money, and then buying another call option that's further out of the money. The point of selling this first call option is to generate the income, and the second call option is to limit potential downside. What you ideally want is for both of these contracts to expire in one month's time, completely worthless. So that means throughout this month, the price of the equity never quite reaches 
this price level. This is the best case scenario, and it's why they use this call spread strategy when they believe the price of the asset will decrease or remain the same. What you want to avoid happening is the price go above the strike price of the call option that you sold. Because say the price went up to $17 per share, because then the person that you sold this call option to has the right to buy these shares at this price level, 15 bucks per share, meaning you have a $2 loss per share. And in theory, this price could continue to go up indefinitely, increasing your risk. And that's where the second call option that you purchased comes into play. In the same way that you are obligated to sell these shares regardless of the price at the previously agreed upon $15 per share, buying this call option ensures that you can buy these shares at 20 bucks regardless of their ultimate price, capping your losses. So hypothetically, if the price went up to $30 during the duration of these contracts, the maximum you can lose here is $5 per share until the call option you bought kicks in. And then the put spread option is the exact inverse. So you're selling a put option a little bit below the current trading price and then buying a put option further below the trading price. Again, they implement this strategy when they believe the price of the asset will rise. That means the put options expire worthless and you get to keep the premium from selling the call option. But if the price does decrease, then your losses are capped due to the second purchased put option. So hopefully it's not too confusing. Remember, put options and call options are just an insurance policy on stocks. And here you're both selling and buying insurance policy and you have a spread because the insurance policy you're selling is a little bit better than the insurance policy that you're buying. And that's why you have that window of loss between the two. But the hope here is the active management can predict what the market's gonna do and implement the correct spread strategy so you don't lose anything and you generate some income. So as of September 22nd, the active management here has a put spread on both the S&P 500 index and this bond index, indicating that they think both will rise over the duration of these contracts. Now, this ETF is just about one year old and stacked up against the S&P 500. Of course, it has way less volatility. It's more conservative. And we do have uh, returns of almost 7% during this time. And that return mostly comes from the dividend, which is sitting at about 7%. And the price since inception has mainly moved sideways with not that much volatility relative to equity markets. So that's a look at ticker high. It's a new ETF that uses a spread option strategy to generate uh, a nice dividend yield. It's potentially a good alternative to standard bond income. But personally, I'm not going to be buying this fund anytime soon because of the active management involved. For this strategy to work most effectively, management has to be able to predict which direction the market is going to go month to month, which is nearly impossible. I think when it comes to option overlay strategies, keeping it as simple as possible is usually the way to go. And that's why I'm a big fan of funds like XYLG, which just systematically sells call options every month on half of the S&P 500. It's very simple, pretty effective, and that's the way I prefer my options personally. But let us know what you think in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.